Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the part 2 on the uh, application of genetics uh, in the previous video I've told you about the uh, selective breeding one of the important application of the genetics and I've told you that you can actually produce the uh, desirable animals and the desirable plants using the uh, different techniques of the selective breeding uh, and uh, during the selective breeding using the different techniques uh, you can have uh, new varieties of the crops and livestock which have better yield uh, better resistant to the pest and diseases and with improved nutritional value and these new varieties they also help uh, to increase the local food production and cut down food imports uh, then i told you about the, the role of the genetics in preventing medicine that if you have a family history of a disease for example diabetes you can consult your doctor you can consult your nutritionist and he can actually give you the uh, uh, give you the guidance of which kind of the food you should take and what should be your lifestyle the uh, genetics that us have got legal application and in the last video i've told you about the paternity how you can actually determine the uh, paternity that whether a man is the child biological father or otherwise and uh, you can actually use different kind of the techniques like if you want to do that uh, during the pregnancy you can use the technique of the nipp which is actually performed during the first trimester uh, you can also use the technique of the cvs which is performed uh, between the 10th and 13th weeks after a woman last menstrual period uh, and you can also use the technique of the amniocentesis uh, and in all of these techniques what you do is you take the uh, dna of the fetus and you compare that with the dna of the mother and the father uh, let's talk about uh, some other imp uh, important application of the genetics uh, when you talk about the legal application uh, the other important aspect is the dna fingerprinting or the technique of the dna fingerprinting uh, what you do is that if there is for example uh, a crime scene and uh, you want to identify the uh, criminal uh, who has committed that particular crime so what you do is that from the crime scene uh, from here you can if you have uh, got a skin cell if you have got the uh, blood the hair or the saliva any kind of the sample uh, these any kind of the skin or the blood hair or saliva samples they can be used to extract the dna uh, from the uh, site of the crime then what you do is uh, then you use the technique of the uh, dna fingerprinting to identify the uh, criminal what you do in the dna fingerprinting is that the dna fingerprinting that actually look at the differences in short tandem repeats these short tandem repeats they are actually a string of the repeating dna nucleotides that are usually two or five bases long uh, for example, these are some of the examples of the uh, STRs, like it can be the CAG, CAG, uh, and the CAG, or it can be like AATG, AATG, AATG. So this is uh, like three nucleotide long repeat sequences. These are four nucleotide repeat sequences. So uh, what you actually look in the DNA fingerprinting is for these short tandem repeats. Now there are many STRs throughout the genome of the human beings. Uh, but each having different uh, repeating units with a different number of repeats and these examples they are very really clear here uh, like uh, there are only three nucleotides they are repeated here four nucleotides they are repeated this is one thing so the repeat the uh, repeating units they are different and also the number of the repeating units they are also different in these strs and this dna fingerprinting actually look for these differences now everyone like every individual have got the same str at the same place in the genome but the number of repeat vary between the individual uh, for example i might have a cag unit that is repeat, repeated five times while you have a cag repeated eight times so the uh, str is the same but the number of time it is repeated that is different between you and me and this difference in the number of the repeat means that people have strs of different lengths which can be easily measured during uh, uh, using a few lab techniques like the DNA fingerprinting. Now what you do is like uh, if you've got for example the blood from a particular crime scene and you have run the DNA from that blood and you've got a sequence like this and these are the three suspects and these are the, actually the STRs that you see in these images. 
Now, when the when you run the DNA of the suspect number one, the suspect number two, the suspect number three, you are getting these different bands, and then you are comparing the bands of these three suspects with the DNA that you got from the crime scene. And if you look at this particular one, the suspect number three, it is actually going to it is giving you the same uh, repeats or the same bands that have been ident that have been recovered from the crime scene while the suspect number one and the suspect number two they have got differences from the uh, original uh, blood or the dna that has been uh, you can say recovered from the crime scene so the suspect number three is not the suspect he is actually the uh, criminal who has committed that particular crime so the dna fingerprinting it is yet another important example of the uh, genetics now the genetics can also help you in the uh, production of different medicines the important medicines uh, for example if you talk about the insulin uh, which is used to treat the diabetes what you can do is that during the uh, the that using the different techniques of the genetics for example if this is a human cell you have isolated the uh, insulin gene from the human you have taken you have uh, selected a bacteria e coli in most of the cases and you have extracted the plasmid from that particular e coli and you have made a recombinant plasmid by that i mean that you have inserted the insulin gene into the plasmid that you have isolated from the bacteria so you have got a recombinant plasmid then you are going to introduce this recombinant plasmid into the bacteria to make it transgenic now this plasmid uh, before it was not having this insulin gene but now this have got this insulin gene and that has been inserted into this bacteria making it transgenic so when you grow this bacteria this transgenic bacteria in the culture that is going to express this insulin gene that is going to give you insulin in the media and then you can extract the insulin for the treatment of the diabetes so the uh, genetics that is also important in the production of important medicines like the insulin and the uh, insulin that is made uh, by these transgenic bacteria by this transgenic e coli that is actually marketed by the name of the humulin now another important example uh, when you talk about the production of medicines or the diagnostic or therapeutics uh, that these are the monoclonal antibodies and genetics can actually help you in the production of these monoclonal antibodies so what you do is that uh, if this is an animal so you are going to challenge this particular animal with the antigen of your interest by that i mean that if you are if you are interested in the diagnosis of a particular disease you are going to introduce that particular antigen responsible for that particular disease into the mouse and the mouse is going to produce antibodies uh, utilizing its spleen cells now what you do is that when you challenge this mouse uh, with this particular antigen uh, this mouse is going to give you specialized spleen cells and the spleen cells are going to produce uh, different antibodies you are going to mix these spleen cells with the myeloma cells you are going to fuse them so you are going to get a hybridoma so why are we mixing that with the uh, myeloma cell is to provide immortality to these spleen cells that is a whole sep a separate topic and the production of the monoclonal antibodies uh, and uh, we will discuss that somewhere uh, in the medical biotechnology course uh, that i will be offering uh, in like a few months so when you mix the spleen cells with the myeloma cell you are getting these hybridomas and what you do is then you are going to select your desired hybridoma to give you the desired monoclonal antibodies and once you have achieved the desirable uh, monoclonal antibodies you can use these monoclonal antibodies uh, in the process of the diagnosis of this particular antigen that you have uh, introduced into the uh, this particular animal and you can also use these uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, in the treatment of a particular disease uh, for example if you talk about the treatment uh, so cancer these days uh, is a very you can say a challenging problem for the uh, persons in the field of the medical sciences uh, but the monoclonal antibodies they can be uh, actually that can actually help you in the production of different monoclonal antibodies which can treat different kind of the cancers uh, for example the lm2 zumab or the uh, ritu zmab they are actually the monoclonal antibodies and they can be used for the treatment of the chronic lymphocytic leukemia 
Uh, another important example is the trust to zoom app like this trust to zoom app can be used for the treatment of the breast cancer uh, and the uh, gastric cancer so these are some of the uh, like uh, important applications uh, uh, in the field of the uh, genetics uh, and this is this is this is actually the base that gave you an idea why you should study genetics so we will uh, continue the uh, discussion in the uh, next video